Hello there, friends. Oh, what a day. I envy those who have just woke up and haven't seen anything that happened at night on the pro scene. This day will definitely be remembered, because several extraordinary things happened at once. But let's take it step by step. But as always, a quick news digest. There's not a lot, because the main breaking piece happened during the major. It has outshined everything else. First, here's what Simple said after losing to Cloud9. Shit game plan, shit performance, need to step up for next games. Um, Blade is the one who comes up with the game plan. Is Simple trying to beef with his coach or am I overthinking it? Write down in the comments what do you think it could be. Next is a quick fun fact for you. It turns out that Brazilians call Valeri Beat as Beach. Valeri Beach. Cruel Portuguese. What's his name? <laughs> 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 if he's going to be too. Well, and the funniest thing that happened during the Major is the Finnish analytics studio. They invited a fortune teller before the start of the Legends stage, and she said that Face would have 3-0, Heroic would fall 0-3, and Mouse, Spirit, Liquid, B.I.G., B.N.E., Ants, and Cloud9 would enter the playoffs. She didn't mention Navi, though. What do you think in this regard? Could the stars be telling us something? Or everything will simply turn out to be like a prediction about FaZe? Friends, today I want to tell you about a decent website, csgo.net. Have you long considered updating your inventory? Now is the best time to act. Moreover, csgo.net launched a thematic Rio Major operation with dozens of neat bonuses and a dedicated giveaway. Here you can find many cases of any taste, upgrades, contracts and absolutely everything you might need. What makes CSGO.net so unique? It's pretty simple. They've been here for years, have their integrity system, a massive amount of users with reviews and proofs, and obviously a referral system. And I can't leave you without a generous bonus. Use my promo code LIVE to get an extra 40% for your deposit. Follow the link in the pinned comment and try it for yourself. Navi vs Liquid opened the day. The map is ancient, Navi start in defense. And as should the favorite on the dominant side, they confidently take round after round. Since 2-2, they took 10 rounds, giving only one in return. Excellent defense from Navi. And Liquid on the contrary had entrance issues. As a result, the score is 12-3 in the first half. After changing sides, exactly the same thing happened. They only switched the roles. Now it was Liquid in control. The culmination of the comeback was the round when the score was 13 to 10, where Navi totally lost the majority on B. They were killed from all sides. Even Navi themselves were impressed. Here, of course, we have to shout out to Liquid. They managed to pull themselves together and showed a great comeback. Given Navi all they need, Nitro keeps it clean. Fire on the bomb site to make sure nobody's in that spot. But it's simple with an open cave door, only momentarily. That will not stop Elise jumping over. Electronic pressures from the other side. They know where Navi's at, but Team Liquid still scrambling to get this defuse. Relo finds it. Simple can't. Stop Stop this time! It's a defuse from Elise with a few seconds to spare. Few people believed in this, but Navi are going 1-2 and are now one step away from getting out of race. It's 16 to 4, only two rounds in attack, a total failure for Navi. Liquid, on the contrary, did a great job, a decent way to go to the playoffs. Meanwhile, Vitality was playing against Mouse. They were fighting to avoid 1-2. 
And Zybo's team did well at the beginning. They had an amazing start and were leading with a score 7-0. But then, Mouse abruptly had a comeback in defense, winning the second pistol round and taking the game to the score of 12-8 in their favor. Vitality added aggression playing in defense, thanks to which they began to find entries and now were leading. Zybo also made a lot of frags by the end and took his team to the 15th round. In response, Mouse sent the game to the overtime with two trouble-free reaches to be. But JDC threw that spam and JDC has opened up this game and sent us to overtime. This should be no chance for Vitality. You think a 3v4 was an unretakeable round? Well, yeah. how about a 2v5? Yeah, that's the craziest part, right? And it's like, of course, they're going to give this one the go. Watch the kid how they should have tried the last. Smoke goes out. And Vitality are going to be kicking themselves. They know that they've let Mouse back into this one. They know that this could be their big undoing. JDC is on for the ace, by the way. Three on the entry. Oh. Can't quite get the fifth to close the round. Zai Wu with the reply, but he's saving in the 1v5. Taken out, finally, we're running it back Let's in go. OT. Maus, take us there. In the overtime, Magisk won two rounds in a row for his team, to which JDK gave a beautiful response. This time, Maus were ahead. And the finale is just something that left us speechless. This happens once in a few years. They bring out the gun in the nice retake, and now he's on the bomb. That Molly, I think it's too late. He can still stick it. He can oh! stick that. Oh no, Maus, they've done it. It has already been dubbed all of Meister's achievement. Is it worthy of a new graffiti? What do you think? Moving on to the match between Ants and Fnatic. There were no epic moments here. Fnatic smashed the enemy's defense to pieces. Ants lost in defense at Nuke with a score of 2-8 and somehow managed to make it 6-9 in the first half. And then they proceeded fail miserably in the attack, taking only one round. A humiliating defeat with a score of 16-7. Fnatic go 2-1. Next up, Spirit vs. Outsiders. This game happened to be much more interesting. After winning the pistol series, outsiders began to demonstrate uncertainty in their attack, thanks to which guys from Spirit took the lead. But everything changed after this round. With a little bit of health, but Siren's gonna find him, and the smoke actually goes close corner so that they can fixate on Norbert. But Jane, what? he catches that kill, and somehow, Wait, how did... in the most outsider's way, they managed to pull off this round win. Is there a gap? Oh, there was a gap. Oh my god, that smoke wins the round. And there was a gap there about to clear Goose. The defense cracked. The attack was having success at almost any entrance, even with a bad buy. As a result, outsiders took the score easily to 10 to 5 in the first half. However, this didn't prevent Spirit from having a comeback. They were victorious in the pistol round with the help of quadro kill from Wonderful. And then, thanks to a slow and calibrated attack, they began to take round after round, some even being the minority. But then, for some reason, the attack suddenly decided to change their style. They began to play a little more aggressively and faster, and they immediately paid for this decision. Outsiders take two rounds in a row. This swinging back and forth leads to a score of 14 to 14. In such tense moments, one little mistake can cost the whole game. Spirit plays Split B and make a mistake with the smoke grenade, which was supposed to close the CT spawn and the whole attack falls apart. Outsiders win and go 2-1. CIS Derby delivers and it's outsiders covered in the blood of their brethren as they'll lead to the 2-1 pool. Let's move on to the match between Cloud9 and Heroic. Best of three to get to the playoffs. Cloud9 were this close to relegation in the challengers stage and now they can be the first to reach the playoffs. And they did everything to make it happen. First, Habit makes a quadro in the pistol round and after that, Nefani wins a 1 vs 2 clutch during the first full buy round. The guys were really energized. Just look at what they do to the poor Heroic players. Wall bang. All of a sudden, Kadian's cut out, it's low HP, Shiro snaps it onto Shush, still nobody on that bomb, Axile all the while in the smoke, goes out, out, stops the deep fuse, Shiro comes in, Tech Nine's out again, no time, C9 to a ninth, and it comes down to the wire, oh, but man. all of Heroic nearly dead. A failed attack from the Danes, 
the score is 11 to 4 in the first half. In the second half, Nefani makes an ace in the pistol round, after which Cloud9 makes the score 14 to 4 without any problems. Heroic tried to fight back a little, but it didn't affect anything much. Final score 16 to 1, and let's see what they showed on the second map. Heroic picked Inferno and looked much stronger on their map. They went neck to neck, exchanging rounds. At the end, Cloud9 manages to lose to a full echo, thanks to which the day finish the first half of the game with a score of 8-7 in their favor. With such an equal score, the second pistol round is extremely important. And Inters knows it. He wins a 1v1 clutch and makes a quadro kill. And after that, we didn't see much action from Heroic. They were able to take only one round in defense. Obviously, if it's a Cloud9 match, there would be highlights from Shiro. This guy plays on unreachable level right now. Easy second half and the score is 16-9 on Inferno. Cloud9 are first to enter the playoffs. With shades of Boston behind them, Cloud9 from an 0-2 in challengers to a birth in the playoffs. We have three more games and we'll save the best for the last. In the meantime, let's watch Sprout versus NIP. Sprout were doing their best to make Swedes feel like they're in a living hell. From the very pistol round to the end of the first half. At some point, NIP were losing with a score of 2 to 10. In the second half, NIP tried to have a comeback in defense, but it didn't work out. The main stars of the team simply didn't show up for the game. Brawlon, Hampus, and Rez were low tap, and NIP surprisingly lose their picked map with a score of 16 to 11. Everything was exactly the same on Ancient. Sprout won a clutch in the pistol round, and that was it. The Swedes couldn't recover until the middle of their defense. Every single time they lose devices without building the economy. Somehow they managed to lose even against Echoes. That said, ninjas lose on the defense side with a score of 7 to 8. No words needed. This is a complete failure. Next guys from Sprout win the pistol and the force rounds and make the score 13 to 8 in their favor. But wait, somehow, which is really hard to believe, ninjas were able to regroup. They had to work very hard to achieve this. Some rounds were simply crazy. Alexi has to save them. The ninjas 1v1 gets the fresh mag stack and clutch up as a Dane versus a Finn and it's all to play for. Oh! Alexi says play on. But at the very last moment, with the score 15-14, Alexi B throws Molotov and it lands behind the wrong box, not behind the one where Xiphon was sitting. So, ninjas in pajamas lose and go 0-3. This major never ceases to amaze. And Refresh says hi to your pickems. Fuck your pickems. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. All right, we had Greyhound with it, now we've got Refresh. Next is Fury versus B.I.G. And the winner will get to the playoffs. And as always, the stadium is fiercely cheering for the Brazilians. B.I.G. didn't seem to have a chance to win from the very first round. Turn. Yuri would have to come up with some heroics here. He's going to pick up one kill, but a lot more to be done. He's sandwiched in there all around him, and he's still fighting. He'll take down Searson as well, spins around, and Yuri, oh my god, he's saving the team keto is on his own now his teammates slain by yuri and there's no way out of this he'll get every single kill a quad at the end in the next one yuri performed an ace and the fans couldn't hold themselves but B.I.G. didn't give up. In such a pressure, they managed to take 6 rounds in attack, winning a couple of clutches. And knowing how the Germans play in defense, they can easily try to win. But, well, not against Furia. The Brazilians easily win the start of the second half to make the score 12 to 6, while the fans are going wild in the background. Well, actually, the Brazilians continued to dominate until the very end. There is not even much to show. Furia was like an avalanche. Like a Brazilian tornado that sweeps away everything in its path. Krimbokadu, he's gonna go down 16 to 9. Opening map goes to Furia. Powered by Yuri, powered by Art, the big stars of the next generation of Brazil showed up. And they've got a one to nothing lead in the champion stage. And on where to go, Counter-Strike guys themselves wanted Furia to go to the playoffs. Sarsen lacks a fraction of a second to take the round. The Brazilians were taking rounds with such class that B.I.G. probably wanted to end this humiliation as soon as possible. 12 to 3 in the first half. Furia gave away only the pistol round in attack, after which Yuri made another ace in the full buy. That's all you need to know about this match. Winning with a score 16 to 6, Furia enters the playoffs. Brazilian magic is back.
It's a wonderful moment. Soak it in. They're the best of Brazil, but that's not the end goal. The end goal. Moving on to the most interesting, Face versus Bad News Eagles. I think everyone already knows what happened here. It all started with the fact that Kerrigan decided not to remove his permanent ban. As soon as the Eagles saw it, they never hesitated to choose it. Yes, this is their worst map, but Face obviously has even less experience on Vertigo. Due to a poor understanding of the map, Face got confused. They didn't do what is required on this map. Brokey displayed the state of the team with his stat being 0 to 9. If it weren't for twists and drops with their crazy aim, it would have been just a one-way match. After the pistol round, B and E won the fourth round and then began to dominate in the defense. They were leading with a score of 12 to 7 against the top team in the world. Face kept afloat only thanks to Robs and Twists, who took the round in a 2 versus 4 situation. Move around quite quickly here to take this fight. Oh, behind right. the box. Oh, it's awkward and GXX, he's gonna be very confident on the swing through. Health advantage. Twists, oh! so precise! But then the Eagles somehow miraculously win the Echo with one device and got to the 15th round. Twists saves the team again. Need more. Twist trying to save them. Face Clan level us out into the two on two. Rigo's still kicking. Oh! Not anymore. Twists with four on the floor. Only one to find. It's GXX. And he'll take him to an ace for some. He was trying his best to get this victory. However, even with Rob's help, it wasn't enough. In the overtime, FaZe were able to take only one round and the score turns 19 to 16. Not a very great choice here with Vertigo. It was one map away from relegating. There's nothing much to tell about Nuke. FaZe never loses there to anyone and b &E wasn't an exception. They were leading in attack with a score of 9 to 1 at one point, so there's nothing really much to discuss here. But then Mirage happened. FaZe felt very confident on the decisive map. The game was very close in some moments and everything was decided in clutches, but they were ending them in their favor and finished the first half with a score of 11 to 4. B and E had a little comeback right from the start of the second half, but FaZe did their best to take all their rounds and managed first to get to the 15th round. But then something strange happened, so that you understand, from the score of 15 to 10, FaZe made only 4 frags in 5 rounds. B and E take 5 rounds in a row and send the game to overtime. After that, they were ahead both in the first overtime and in the second one. It's the crucial moment when the Eagles had only one round left to win and FaZe occupied plan B. At this moment, Synapse makes a great decision. He goes through under to plan B. Brokey seemed to be waiting for him, but this was a wasted bomb and the round crumbles literally in one second. Kerrigan was left alone in a 1 vs 4 clutch, takes a deep captain's breath and goes to win it. From Kerrigan or they're out! Escorted off the premises! In last place, a oh. legend stage, a quick tap, but Carrigan, 10 HP, 2 to find, this can't be real. A slow start, but a more painful finish, Carrigan, 2 to find, and they're out! Unbelievable! Bad news, Eagles are the bearers of bad news for FaZe! It just can't be. The reigning major champion drops out with a 0-3 score from the legend stage for the first time in history. The whole world is shocked. Here's the schedule for today. See you soon.